Hello, welcome to an audience with Bert. There's only me here. There's no audience. And this is what's happened to me since I've been in The Apprentice. And other things like Dragon's Den and Austin Stevens. I think it's great and I want you to watch it anyway. So if you do turn it off, I'll be round your house. He was the, the favourite in the house. And all the girls wanted to be around him because he was cracking jokes. Someone mm. did manage to add a hair to one of the salads, though, I think, as compensation. One or more pubics. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Don't know how he got there. I was having a little scratch. <laughs> and what, what was the story there? Somebody moaned about me tossing in the salad. <laughs> <laughs> he had a great gift of humour, of quick responses. I've shown you that I've got raw business talent. I've shown you that I've got raw... Have you got a brother called Bill? He's really gregarious, you know, you really warm to him. He's great fun. Um, he's really nice to spend time with. I'm leaning on the lamppost in the corner of the street. Oh, I can play the girl boy. Bert is not a singer. I mean, he would, he would admit to that. Tom, up yours. I'm a singer. Pain in the ass. But a likeable fellow. I think he could have gone all the way through in, in, in many ways. I nearly followed through a few times when I was in that seat facing Alan Sugar. Scary moments they are. They're very scary moments. I had a couple of marks in my pants. He's very clever at what he does. He's very good at getting people on side. Very good at getting you to like him. Good team leader, Lorraine? Yeah, he was. We, we, yeah, he was quite good, yeah. It's the kind of guy you don't leave your daughter with. You don't need his sister with him. He used to oil his way up to me and he used to oil his way up to Margaret and sort of compliment us on things that had nothing to do with anything at all. Just trying to sort of chum me up. I didn't oil my way up to Nick. No, that's not right, that ain't. I oiled Margaret up. Oh, I'll give her some lubrication. <laughs> well, I think he came very near to getting a smack from Margaret. I love the shape of their legs. Kind of like, remind me of Margaret's beautiful five. When the team was losing, then he could turn a bit hostile, uh, try and blame others. Sign of it, those are the signs that's, of a desperate man. Most of them was laughing at it. You little prick. I've been in a lot of, obviously, boardrooms with uh, Sir Alan and Margaret. I've never seen him so angry. I never got on with Ben. I didn't like him at all. I still think he's a little prick. It was apparent on that task that uh, there was a big personality clash. I don't know what she's on about. I've never, I've never seen a parrot with me anyway. I think that's utter nonsense. It's the last you'll ever get off me as well. I sold my bloody heart out for you. You stupid idiot. He used to always talk a good game, you know, and he used to always get right in there and he had balls of brass. She shined my balls of brass many times. Enough to bring him back. Stay out of this show. Have you got someone stuck up your arse? Is that what you're always giving? No, you fool! You find another way to express yourself. Don't talk to him in that manner. You talk to me and get your points over to me. Crazy. A crazy thing to do. I was a very good disco dancing champion as well. What's, what's that mean? The swift moves. He was an absolute waste of space. He lost control of the whole task, did not know what he was doing, but still had the arrogance of believing that he was right. Unbelievable. I'm always right. I've more... I've never been wrong in my life. That's why I've got the vast wealth I've got now. I'm worth over £90 million. Pound. Did one of his brain cells fall out of his head and just leave one in there? Oh, that's where that James Blunt was born, eh? You're beautiful. You're beautiful to me. Not funny. Stupid. Who on earth wants someone who gets on your wick, gets up your nose and drives you to drink? I mean, why would you choose him? Would I choose him to come and live in my house? No. Would I like to go out for dinner with him? No. And would I give him a job as my apprentice? Bloody well, no. My God, who wouldn't want a drink? Fancy waking up to that fat cow. God, Jesus. Even the tide wouldn't take her out. I think what I saw in the end was someone so full of themselves. Tell me in simple, old-fashioned terms that I will understand what you think you're best at doing. I got to the final of the uh, snooker championships and I played Ronnie O'Sullivan in the final. Right, OK. On the Xbox. 
All talk, no do. He had to go. After I stole Sir Alan Sugar's Rolls Royce, I ended up fleeing to the jungle in my private jet, which is not my private jet, it was Alan Sugar's, I pinched that as well, and I went and hid down my favourite hole. Join me now as I relive my most dangerous encounters. <laughs> Because I always hide in an hole after I've pinched the Rolls Royce and stolen the aeroplane. Each time it's like a new experience. I have to be careful, there's no question about it. Yeah, I came across a wild big one about eight foot long and a really wily one. He's full of scars and stuff. It was just as if this guy had been through everything, he knows the work. You know? oh, leave him alone. Get the heck out. I knew he was still out there, so I went up my other back passage. Hey, hey, look at this, look at this, look at this. And then this twat wearing this orange shirt kept on poking a stick down there for some reason. Not if you can't get out really fast. The stick doesn't go far around enough. <laughs> <laughs> right the bed. He tried to crawl up my hole. I won't have him that. I carry torches with me, one in my pocket and one in my hand. I don't want to take no chances. After weeks of going down dead ends, I'd finally found a tunnel that looked promising. Oh. <laughs> Never seen anything like my life. He came straight at me with his body raised with his mouth that open. And I mean his mouth is this size. It's that big, with all those teeth. And he came straight at me and took long lunges at me. Whack! I dragged him in. I dragged him in. And I was... Whoa, crunching his head. It could take just seconds to kill me. That's the most frightening thing. It was a frightening experience. It was nightmarish. Oh, the blood was everywhere. But it shouldn't be in my hole, should he? The first two hours of my stakeout leave me feeling more determined than ever. Oh, no, you're out there. But I'll tell you, above everything, I was so embarrassed. Never trust a man who waits outside your hole. I'll see you coming back. Cause you got that horrible shirt on. And I ain't coming out. No sign of him at all. But I know he's in there. Yeah, after I've normally pinched a Rolls Royce and pinched an aeroplane and flee to the jungle and hide down an hole where this bloke comes and prods me with a stick, I thought I'll come back and I'll reinvent myself as Burt Brown. Burt Brown. Mind reader. I bet you, if you look back at all the dragon's faces, we were all ready to write a check. Hello, my name is Bert. Bert Brown. I, I first of all couldn't understand what he was talking about. I don't know if he did training or put acts together. It was like one big circus. A, a circus? Is, is that a suitcase? For a 15% stake? in Bert's ultimate mind school. My first impression of Ian when he came into the den was an extremely capable, presentable individual. And I would like to pass my powers on to other people. My instant feeling about it was, what a silly idea and what a lovely man. Oh, I love Deborah Minga. She's lovely. You will end up like all the other girls that I have made love to. Sitting in a chair, looking like that. <laughs> Very sexy when she's, uh, you know, rolling the bogeys. I like that, yeah. Your children's inheritance would go towards promoting my DVDs, my self-help book, and several tours what I will be doing in theatres. I have to say, I didn't really understand the product, um, and, but he was very clear and very concise about it. Um, and, I, and he literally just unfolded it for me, so I, yeah, good pitch. I'm confused. Have you forgot where you've moored your boat? Well, let me tell you. It's next to Theo's in Porta Banus. He's smart. Okay. He's well spoken. He's one of those special people that makes an impression immediately. I thank you! Wow. There's two halves to that pitch. There was a bit that actually we're all thinking, God, oh, this, this is good. This could work. You will make a sound like a car horn. No one in their right mind. 
and then we had the moment. Are you looking for contacts? Are you looking for office space, office support? Very specifically. I expect you to do the washing up and put my tea on the table every night! <laughs> You know, Duncan was out of breath, giggling away. It was literally, it's like Lauren Hardy. And on my socks and clean the skids off my pants! <laughs> <laughs> it became very clear very quickly that um, he would be quite a difficult character to work with. He wasn't a listener, he was a talker. I had a very unbalanced childhood. There was only three wheels on my pram. I didn't have a very good upbringing. My dad used to come home from work, he used to throw me up in the air, and then he'd walk away. And the rest of it I would like to keep to myself, so I'm not telling you. I think his negotiation skills had a lot to be commended. I'm also magic in bed, and you can find out if you would like to. Come up to my room tonight, 216, the key's underneath the mat. OK, I'm going to make you an offer. And I'll make you an offer at the level that you asked. There's a lot of things happened in that room, 216. I'm sure Deborah will probably do a kiss and tell in the news of the world one day. I will offer you the full amount. In return, I would want 15% of the company. I just really sort of bought into it, and I think it's more about the event side of the business that I really saw an opportunity. A lot of Peter Jones, he's, he, he was all right, Peter. I thought, God, they're investing in a circus. This is a circus. I'll leave it to them. I want out of this. All you have to do is watch my lips. This is absolutely ludicrous. And I'm out. Let me out the loony bin. Well, I have been in the loony bin. They knew that there was something wrong with me. I told them I'd been on medication. He knows I've been on medication. Haven't I been on medication, see? He knows, yeah. Uh, you see before you something and you can't make it out people who are simply belligerent and rude and not listening to what's being said and creating their own agenda, I find it virtually impossible to work with. So I won't be needing your money because I already have it in my bank account, Bert Brown's bank account. He was rude, arrogant, stubborn. He's arrogant. I just thought it was just ridiculous. Thank you. Goodbye. I've been touring as Bert Brown for the last five months. So the journey continues as far as I'm concerned. And after I've finished doing this video, there's going to be several more coming to you in the new year. Pervert! <laughs> Uh-uh.